The holiday seasons are approaching, but for Democrats in Washington, D.C., it's already Christmas time. Thank you, Trey Radel. <laughs> Folks, it just doesn't get much better than this. Trey Radel, the so-called conservative, <laughs> hip-hop conservative, Republican of Florida, caught red-handed buying cocaine. Now, this is the same Congressman Trey Radel who voted to drug test those evil, lazy, welfare bums because goodness knows we wouldn't want taxpayer money going into the pockets of drug users. That was Trey Radel's theory anyway when he voted for that. Now we see what this congr congressman doing with his off hours. He's off buying cocaine from undercover cops in Washington, D.C. Now, a lot of comedians, John Sturt included, have had a lot of fun with the fact that here's a guy who puts on his, I guess, his Facebook page, that is his number one place in the world vacation spot is Cartagena, Colombia should tip you off as to the sort of interest he has. Now, I will give Trey Radel credit here. He, he, he did about as well as you can when something like this does erupt. He apologized. He made no mis he, excuses. He didn't attack other people. He's now taken a leave of absence. At this point, you got to figure the guy's no longer trying to figure out how to get to the Senate or the presidency or even keep his house seat. At this point... You have to think his number one concern is, how am I even going to feed my family and my child? How can I find gainful employment? I mean, he's only been in the House. Uh, he was just elected. This is his first term. So it's not as though he's a 20-year veteran and can easily slide into some cushy lobby job. So we'll be following this very, very closely. Now, in, in some ways related news is <laughs> what's going on up in Canada. This guy Rob Ford with his cocaine problems, drug addiction problems, it just continues to get weirder and weirder. There the, the city council has stripped away all of his powers and at this point the people who support Rob Ford are really very similar to the people who support Charlie Sheen. I think the good folks over at Talking Points Memo pointed this out. And at some point, no matter how extreme, bizarre, weird you are, you're going to find supporters somewhere who will su support you. I've even had a few on this channel. But I gotta tell you, no serious person thinks that Rob Ford is playing this well in the media. And by the way, did you see, he had his own talk show earlier this week. It was canceled the same day. <music> Also in the news, speaking of traditional values, the patron saint of the traditional values crowd in this country, Rupert Murdoch, the owner of Fox News Channel, is going through his third divorce. He's now got to split up the assets of his vast empire to three different sets of children from three different wives. Now, folks, I'm not opposed to divorce, but this idea that you're going to spend essentially billions of dollars supporting a political party that says they're in favor of traditional values and these awful liberals over here, they're destroying morality through things like divorce. And yet here's the patron saint, not one wife and kids, not two wife and sets of families, not three. <sighs> Looks like he'll be on to number four soon. He's 82, a good catch if you like the elderly billionaire sort of thing. By the way, this was quite a, a profitable venture for Wendy Murdoch, a woman nearly 40 years his junior. She gets to keep the $44 million apartment in Manhattan, so don't be feeling sorry for her anytime soon. I'm glad to see Obama doing something with his presidential power that doesn't seem to be pandering to conservatives. I was very pleased to see that he gave the Medal of Freedom to Clinton and to Obama, excuse me, and to Oprah. 
Uh, obviously, that's not the sort of thing that pleases conservatives, but Bill Clinton, obviously well-deserving of a Medal of Freedom. Although, when you've been President of the United States, I'm not sure how many more honors and medals really make a difference. But it does send a message to the world that the United States still values competence, values compassion, values moderation. The situation of Bill Clinton intrigues me because there are a lot of so-called smart conservatives I know. People who think of themselves as, you know, not the sort who would support a Sean Hannity. They look at him as some sort of low-life troglodyte. But there are a lot of smart conservatives who buy into this whole myth that Obama's an awful president, that he's just not competent, he's sort of too extreme. Why couldn't he be more like Bill Clinton? And what they fail to remember is every so-called smart conservative, savvy conservative, libertarian conservative, during Clinton's term, vilified him, smeared him, and said this is the worst president in the history of the world, or at least off an awful embarrassment if they didn't go that far. So conservatives have this interesting, bizarre history of rewriting history. And it's always about anybody who is in power now, any Democrat, any liberal, any moderate who's in power now, is somehow beyond the pale awful, if only like they could be those ones, those, conserv those liberals in the present, or, or excuse me, in the past. I'm T.J. Walker. Thanks for joining me.